The city of Bakersfield, California, traditionally used to be Kit Fox habitat. Their natural habitat tends to be arid grasslands and scrublands. Almost for as far back as folks can remember, kit foxes have been seen in town, and the impression was that these were animals that were being displaced by development, and they were either going to die or be pushed out. But kit foxes are, are canids, and canids in general tend to be highly adaptive. Um, and so surprisingly, they've done you know, really, really well in that urban environment. Other than the mange epidemic, which has been sweeping through it in recent years, in a bag, him or her, um, confirm who it is, and then um, just check the teeth and the mouth and make sure that that's all good. Door open. I'm working with the Wildlife Investigations Lab and the Endangered Species Recovery Program, and we're investigating a mange epidemic that's occurring in kit foxes, primarily in Bakersfield. It's a fatal disease that's caused by a mange bite called Sarcoptes scabii. It's known as scabies in people and then mange in animals. Sarcoptic mange infection seems more common in urban environments for kit foxes, and we're trying to understand why. This one does have some hair loss here on the hips. You can see the hair is short and broken. For now, we are trapping kit foxes and treating them to help prevent mange from spreading. Kit foxes have an annual cycle. The dens that they build, they use throughout their entire life. And so when you go into an area and you see a den and you clear it, the foxes will always try to come back. And so it's really important to take that into consideration. Habitat loss is still the biggest threat to the species and habitat is still being converted primarily to agricultural uses but also to urban and industrial uses as well. When those uses go in, the foxes can't make dens in those areas. Usually rodenticides are used in those areas so all of their natural prey is eliminated. The irrigation tends to wash them out of the dens or flood the dens. So there's nothing to eat, no place to hide from the coyotes or other predators. So we really don't see them using agricultural lands to any extent at all. The Pinoch Valley Preserve was established as part of a mitigation project for a solar project that went in here in the valley. In order for them to permit this project, they had to set aside land as mitigation. So once they had identified the land, uh, we came in and we helped figure out what the cost would be to manage this land in perpetuity. Con Edison Development is very committed to its mission, and that is providing clean, renewable energy. And so part of what we did at the Panoch Valley Project was to provide this very necessary mitigation land for the preserve of these endangered species that were affected by the development. For San Joaquin Kit Fox, contiguous parcels and contiguous acres is really important because of the size of their home range and the need for areas for them to disperse into when they do have pups. So 26,000 acres that's adjacent to BLM lands, this is a really large, nice parcel of contiguous lands that San Joaquin Kit Fox can use. This Pinoch Valley, which is the center of the whole project, it's dry. It just went from wild animals to ranching to farming, and then now it's back to ranching and solar farms and preservation of species. Pinoch Valley and the surrounding area is considered one of three core areas for threatened and endangered species, especially kid fox. This land has been conserved in a mostly natural state. You can see all these little trails here, burrows and holes, and it's just a ton of rodent activity going on out here. They form an ecosystem of San Joaquin Valley species that is not intact in very many places, and this is an intact ecosystem that is gonna be managed for years to come. i have been proud to be a part of this whole thing. The ranching and the solar farms and the species, it all works together. I mean. If we take care of the land, the land will take care of us and our cattle and the species. So it's just been a fine deal. Not many people have done that. 
This is a real instance where parties can work together to come to very good solutions in a way that benefits the people of California and also preserves areas for species that might be impacted by our activities. Collaboration is key. No person can do this alone. Together, we can work to have a common solution that will benefit everybody. We have an obligation to future generations to be good stewards of what we've been given. And California is a gift. And we've got to figure out how to preserve enough of each of the examples so that all the diversity we have in California can be sustained for the generations to come.